So in today's Sunday case study, I wanted to touch on a topic that I discussed in a video earlier this week, which was environmental awareness. So we have an 82 year old female who gets out of bed in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Now she decides not to turn on the light so she doesn't disrupt her partner. And when she gets out of bed, she trips over the rug, falls and lands, striking her forehead on the bedroom dresser. Immediately onset of neck pain and 911 was called. Now this patient's neurological examination is, she is neurologically intact, meaning she has no weakness or no numbness, only complains of neck pain. She does have a large laceration on her forehead, which is repaired in the emergency department. So any elderly patient that presents with a fall when 911 is called, what steps should be taken until this patient is transported to the hospital? Here's the results of the patient's CT upon arrival to the emergency department. Of course, I also want to know what the diagnosis is on the CT scan and, of course, what is the treatment. Stay tuned tomorrow for a full video explanation. So in yesterday's video, we discussed the case of an 82-year-old female who fell going to bed and struck her forehead, suffering a forehead laceration and this injury right here. So what we see on this CT scan is a type 2 odontoid fracture. So the odontoid is a C2 bone, which is the second vertebrae in our cervical spine or our neck. And it is the most commonly injured vertebrae in folks older than 65 years old. The most common way it's broken is from falls from ground level. And it's something that I see all the time in my practice. Now, the reason why we should know about these is because a high risk of morbidity and mortality in elderly patients with these type of breaks, very similar to hip fractures. The one year mortality after uh, suffering a C2 fracture is high as 37% in some studies, which is comparable to hip fractures. Basically what that means in English is that they have a 37% chance of death within one year of this fracture. Let's talk about the anatomy of the C2 bone. So we have our C1 and C2 bone, and that joint itself provides about 50% of the range of motion in our cervical spine. On a CAT scan, it looks like this, where it has this finger-like projection that allows into articulation with C1. So our C1 bone, or our atlas, is like a ring, and the C2 bone has a peg, kind of like a triangle, and they fit onto each other like this. And when you turn your head side to side, it provides rotation of your neck. And it provides about 50% of the range of motion, your ability to turn side to side. There's three main types of odontoid fractures. Type 1 is where the end uh, or the tip breaks off. Uh, type 2 is where the entire dens is broken off. And type 3 is where the vertebral body is uh, involved. Type 1 and type 3 fractures typically can be treated with immobilization or with a collar, whereas type 2 fractures sometimes need surgery because it's unstable. Now to go through the answers to the questions that I asked in the video, I asked what you would do with this patient if EMS arrives on the scene. Any patient with a fall that complains of neck pain should be immobilized in a hard cervical collar until arrival to the emergency department and uh, clearance of that collar. Now in our patient, when she arrived to the emergency department and had a CAT scan of her neck, she had a three millimeter posterior displacement of the dens. Surgical intervention in this type of fractures can have many risks involved and definitely weighing the health of the patient and the overall health status of the patient can be very important in how we decide to treat this patient. This particular patient, despite her age, was very healthy and very active. So I felt that she needed surgical intervention to help stabilize this fracture. I elected to place this patient into cervical traction, which is where we uh, take skull pins and hang weight from the head to realign that fracture. Now this can certainly be attempted to be managed in a cervical collar, but I felt like this fracture was slightly more unstable than most given the amount of posterior displacement. Now once you decide that a patient is in need of surgery, there are two approaches to the spine, uh, basically an anterior approach or a posterior approach. An anterior approach or coming through an incision on the front of the neck is called an odontoid screw and that will um, place a screw across the fracture plane and, um, and the patient will still have range of motion of their neck. A posterior approach, we come through the back of the neck and we pin C1 and C2 together or fuse them together and essentially they'll lose a lot of range of motion of their neck or the ability to turn side to side. So there are definitely pros and cons of each approach. I chose to do an anterior approach in this patient where we place a guide pin through the base of the C2 bone all the way to the tip of the dens, and that's followed by a screw that goes over the guide pin and will fixate the bottom of the C2 bone 
to the tip of the C2 bone and internally pin that fracture together. Here is the results of the post-operative imaging on this patient where you see that the fracture is now stabilized. The patient will be treated in a hard collar to immobilize the spine even after the screw placement for three months. Now this particular patient did very well after surgery. I kept her immobilized in a hard collar for three months. Uh, she did have some post-operative dysphagia or trouble swallowing, which is very common after the surgery, but that resolved within a few weeks. And within a few months, all of her pain was completely gone and she did really well. Now the one point that I wanted to make in this particular video is environmental awareness. Ground level falls are very common in the elderly and I think is extremely important if you have an elderly loved one to go to their home and investigate and see if there's any chance for falls risk such as uh, rugs or any loose flooring that may trip them up and also educate them on prevention manners. So I hope you guys learned something from this case study and stay tuned next week for another interesting case. So this question is in response to my video on cervical spine fractures in the elderly, and I quoted that uh, some studies quote up to 37% chance of mortality within a year of an older patient with a C2 fracture. This data is somewhat similar to what we know about hip fractures in the elderly, and that predisposes them to an increased mortality within one year of hip fracture as well. Obviously, it's not the fracture that leads to the increased mortality rate, but it's more of the reasons why they suffered the fracture and things that can happen to them after the fracture. So what I mean by that is patients that suffer ground level falls and subsequently develop a cervical fracture or hip fracture are probably somewhat medically debilitated that led to them to fall. In addition to that, undergoing the rehabilitation that's needed to recover from a fracture like this puts them at risk for pneumonia or other medical conditions that may cause death. So I hope that answers your question.